こんにちは今日は地球ナンバーワンパーティーやろうこと世界的人気を誇る DJ スティーブ・アオキさんにインタビューしたいと思いますすごく緊張しますがたくさん質問したいと思いますよろしくお願いしますはじめましてはじめまして<笑>まず早速質問していきたいと思います今年だけですでに3度目の来日ですが今回の来日では何をしましたかインタビューズインタビューズラーズンラーズンインタビューズ買い物とかなやなやノーショッピングやじゃあ maybe、um, uh, 明日,明日行きますショッピングする<笑> but I'm going to do a lot of shopping oh yeah the show Sunday was one of my favorite favorite shows I've ever done here、um, since Neon Future just came out I was really looking to see if、uh, the fans people knew the songs and I saw them singing along to all the songs and it just made me really happy so I was and the energy was crazy energy is incredible、uh, yeah I love I love the fans and we even after the meet and greet we ran out Um, to the merch booth and you know kind of like ambushed people you know and you know hung out in the crowd I like doing stuff like that well when I first started DJing I wasn't DJing to to become a DJ I was DJing to throw the really cool parties in Los Angeles Around my label d i m m a k It was really to promote d i m m a k And then eventually I you know, started DJing more, started producing electronic music, and then I started growing as an artist years later.、Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of pressure, you know, from my father growing up. He's、uh, always instilling a strong. Arduous work ethic in our lives, and、uh, that, that was a really big component of, of you know, understanding drive and passion. And, and you know, if I love something, you got to give 110% to whatever you're doing. So, just those basic principles were the building blocks for all the different things that I've been doing. I was bored. <laughs> you know, I was like, I had like, my hair was growing out and it was in a really awkward stage and I had this really funny looking bowl cut. You know, the Japanese bowl cut. d o e s not, did not look too good on me. So eventually it just grew out and I just kept growing it. I'm like, hey, it's not bad. He kept growing it, growing it. Eventually, you know, now I'm, it's, it's a bit too long now. But because the problem is, like this length, you know what the, pro- the problem is? is? Is that when I hold the cake,、oh, yeah. it, my hair gets in the cake,、oh, so I have、yeah. to cut it a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah, I think the same, same length, yeah. <laughs> Might be, yeah. Um, this is back in 2011, and、um, I was already using the raft and Doing all kinds of other stuff. And I wanted to bring something new to the show. So、um, I was inspired by a music video uh, and, uh, of these cakes exploding in people's faces in slow motion and decided, hey, you know what? I'll play the song and then I'm going to cake someone. And, and then、I'm, we shot a video of it. We put it up on YouTube. It went viral really fast. And,、uh, and then we just Started caking, I started caking more and more people, and more people made signs and kind of you know, stuck around. Yeah, so、um, when I cake someone, I'm looking for the person with the most energy that wants the cake. So if you make a sign, you put a lot of energy into the sign. If, you, if you're like climbing on someone's shoulders and screaming for the cake, I have to cake you, you know? <laughs> so then it's a, the problem is t- I need to get more cakes. Because in Japan, there's a lot of signs. So it's, I wish I had more cakes. 
Um, the secret is, is, is the crowd. Because the crowd is going to help make this a crazy party. If the crowd isn't interested, it's very difficult to be engaging with them, you know? It's like same kind of thing if I'm talking to you and, and you like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You start talking to someone else. I'm like, oh, and then you stop the conversation. Like, but if we're having a conversation and you say, you know, it's like we can continue talking and it's fun. So same kind of thing. With the crowd has to be kind of communicating back with me. And the more, the more energy the show will have. Um, the concept is based on this idea of a utopian future. And, and uh, it's all based on a lot of different writers and scientists and philosophers talking about um, a future that, to look forward to. So um, that's why I have Ray Kurzweil and Aubrey de Grey, the, the intro and the outro on the album. These are two well-respected names in science and futurism. And, um, and so it gives a real context of, of this idea of neon future. You know, there's a musical component, but then there's the very real concept of what I think of the future. Uh, yeah, well, there's um, Neon Future Part 2 is a whole new uh, feature list of artists. Uh, Snoop, Linkin Park, Rivers Cuomo from Weezer, um, Walk Off the Earth, Moxie, uh, Matthew Coma, Nervo. Those are seven. There's actually a couple more. I'm trying to figure out which ones to add. I I'm, I'm feel very lucky because I get to tour and, for, and play in front of so many people, so many different cultures, um, and this music is global, so it's, it's like got no boundaries. You really can play anywhere, so it's, it's incredible. And the more it grows, the more opportunities are for artists like myself, and, uh, and also just to produce music, I, it, it opens a doorway for me to work with any genre, you know, any genre out there. I think there's going to be an artist that will want to work with someone like me. So that makes me really happy. Japan, thank you so much. Domo arigato gozaimashita. You give me so much love, so much energy, um, and all your support from Neon Future Part 1 means the world to me. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, it's out now. Check it out. And follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Steve Aoki. I do my best to check up on the mansions and, and post funny pictures because I'm going to retweet you and I'm going to post those up. I love you. Sayonara. Sashibori.